Hey guys, it's Tim and Azad. We're down here in Forest Lawn and we're talking to Trina. We're getting ready to sell this beautiful home. Uh, Trina, how long have you lived here for? Three years. Three years and you keep it unbelievably, <laughs> really nice. It's clean, I love it. Um, <laughs> and we just want to get Trina's take as a tenant down here in Forest Lawn because we get investors all the time saying, why don't, why don't we go and invest here? And we're like, you know what? You really have to have thick skin. And Trina was just going over what she's seen since she's lived here. So Trina, let's talk about Forest Lawn and why it would be, uh, why Tim and myself would tell investors what we just told you, what we're telling them. Um, Where should we start? I think it would be the last ungentrified neighborhood in Calgary, so that is definitely a pro. Yes. Um, because Inglewood, Ramsey, Bridgeland, all of those have already been to that state where they've cleaned up, they've yeah. reduced the homeless situation. Uh, this is sort of like the last of the untouched, a little bit yeah. rougher neighborhoods left in the city. And I love that, Trina, because the values here are unbelievable. Like we're listing this infill for 450, and it's, it's, it is stunning, but mm -hmm. what is going on on your front lawn and in the back and around the streets here? There is um, not just this outreach center, but there's a handful of outreach centers throughout this neighborhood to help with drug problems, prostitution, homelessness. So you do get a migration of that sort of population into the area. And because all of these things are close, occasionally you will have people who might set up a homeless camp in between the two houses. Yeah. Um, I do find a number of used condoms and needles in and around the property in the morning, sometimes oh in the evenings, you will okay. see that. There is a lot of transient people up and down on the street, uh, a lot of sirens, yep. because there have been, with the outreach center, this becomes like a community sort of hangout for homelessness or drug addicts, knowing that they can get needles here, knowing that drug dealers will be in and around the area knowing that there's a drug exchange, knowing that they have a clientele to sell to here. Yeah. So you see drug deals, you see drug dealers, you see prostitution, you see homelessness, you see used paraphernalia. And it's real. It's, it's this real. Is real. And, this is and then the sirens coming in because there has been some stabbing, some shootings. There have been a few. It happens. Yep. Yep. Uh, there is some gang activity, so you do hear gunfire. It's not uncommon not to hear that in wow. this area. Wow. And Trina, and I got neighbors are decent. Okay, well that's good to hear. Several of the people who live here are older, uh, 70s, 80s, and have been here since the prime of Forest Lawn back in the 50s and 60s. Yeah, they're proud Forest Lawn people. But we they are now selling like and moving out. Yeah. And, and so with that, we're getting a lot more uh, investors moving in and turning them into rental properties. So yes. with the rental properties, you start to see a bit more of the transient population. Okay, and you were asking why our client, Reshma, is selling this. She's simply selling it because the market has come up to where it needs to be to offload it. And she's just tired of the problems. This property itself, what was going on here? You were just telling us the story with people in the basement and stuff like that. Um, before we moved in, the property sat vacant for about a year from what I was told and because there was no fencing around the property, the homeless people in the area were using this as a traffic way that was off of the main streets mm -hmm. and unlit. Mm -hmm. And after having been the property sitting vacant as long as it was, it made it accessible for them to break in unnoticed and had set up a camp in the basement. So basically there was a homeless situation. And the only reason it became known to the owners, and I think the leasing agency, was because they cut the gas line off of the garage, and suddenly the gas company contacted them that there was something going on with the heat and the gas in the property. Wow, pretty scary. So the actual gas meter was taken off of the house. Yeah, and we see these buyers coming from either Vancouver or Toronto, and they'll, they'll just snap these properties up, because mm -hmm. they don't even know the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, just your take, because we see, uh, we see, you have to be informed when you're getting into a neighborhood like this. So thank you for, for sharing this with us. But how long do you see, because people say, no, Forest Lawn's getting better. They redid International Ave, they spent money on it. They got the bus service now, rapid bus service going up and down. How long, how many years do you think, because you live here, your personal opinion, it will take for this community to turn around? So my family has been in Calgary for many years. My grandfather was one of the founders with Fort Calgary. He came out with the military. Yep. My dad was born and raised here down in Inglewood. And Inglewood certainly went through its same sort of share of 
bikers, prostitution, yeah. drugs. East Village. And they the same talked thing. about it for years that it was going to turn around and a lot of people moved in and bought property thinking this is going to be the next it community. From my experience being in Inglewood and I lived there for a number of years, it took about forty years for it to actually turn itself around. They talked yeah. about that yeah. from about 1970, 72, yeah. that that neighborhood was going to be the next it community, that it would clean up, that it yeah. would be restored. But it wasn't until about 2006, 2007, I bought down there in 2005. And when I first moved into Inglewood, there was a drug house across the street wow. and one of the houses was being run as a brothel. It Crazy. wasn't until around 2012 where I really started to see it clean up in Inglewood. So wow. from 1972 to 2012. And, and it's inner city. Yeah. It's close to the river. It's close to all of the bottle depots. It's close to homeless centers. It's close to outreach centers. Yeah. So when you put those things in a neighborhood, which every neighborhood is now starting to have within Calgary right. to try and disperse it, yes. it takes a bit of time. It takes its toll yeah. on a community. Yeah. And, and that's why we wanted to interview you because we know investors out there just jump in blindly to these properties in these areas. And uh, it's just good to hear firsthand from someone that's lived in the neighborhood, knows what's going on. And what would you say to investors out there that want to invest in, in an area like Forest Lawn in Calgary? I mean, we would put people in here if they know what they're doing and they got mm -hmm. the right guidance. And that's what Tim and I do for our investors. But what would you say to them uh, that, that don't know the area and don't know what they're buying? And, and I think it doesn't matter which area you're buying into. Investment in real estate, people like to see it as a short-term investment, but it's long-term. Yeah. You think if you're going to buy real estate, you shouldn't anticipate seeing any real profit for the first five to ten years. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, there is some straight up advice from Trina, who lives down in Forest Lawn. If you like what you saw today, we're trying to keep it real so you investors make the right decision. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel below and we'll see you at our